All right, so today I'm gonna to show you the Support Center Insights tool. There's really two main aspects to this tool and it's gonna be live data as well as historical data. Now live data exists in the Support Center itself and not the Support Center Insights tool as well. Um, so the Support Center Insights live data is really meant to be for a director or a manager, somebody who doesn't have any need to actually address calls, you know, answer calls or, or monitor or listen, but rather they just wanna have an idea of the overall performance of the call center. So they can see on the supervisor dashboard here, um, it's gonna be more like a 30,000 foot view. I can select specific queues I wanna look at, and then I can see, you know, total number of agents, queue totals. So this would be for me to glance at and see, you know, how many people are on hold, does it seem normal? You know, or is this something, is this some situation that I might want to start paying attention to, right? So longest wait time, average speed of answer, longest talk time. I can see agents in queue down here, and then I can see individual queues if I want to pay attention to, you know, tech support instead of customer service, whatever that might be. I can launch a wall board from this screen. So I'll select launch wall board. I can launch this in browser, or I can Chromecast this to a TV. So I'll Chromecast it to any TV in the office. You can send multiple to multiple TVs if you want to display different information for different departments. Um, I'll just launch this in browser to give you an idea. So it's a nice dark mode. Everyone loves dark mode nowadays. You know, your TV is going to love it. Obviously, it's going to save the life of your TV. It's easier to look at. But really, it's the same information. It's just meant to kind of share an accountability for your contact center. Everyone can be aware of, you know, how many callers are on hold and, and uh, make sure that they're addressing these calls. So I'm going to come back. Um, Real-time activity, this is going to be specific to individual queues. So I can click real-time activity. I can look at a total of, of you know, unattended contacts, attended contacts, and current contacts for all of these queues. Or I can look at an individual queue. And likely, this is what you'll want to do. You'll want to click on an individual queue, see this performance, see all the unattended calls right here. You can see the queue activity over here. So which agent is on a call with which person? And then I have, you know, a breakdown of agent statuses, you know, who's ready for a call, who's on other calls, and daily totals. So I can see abandoned, timed out, handled, um, failed, and evicted. I'm going to jump into the analytics. This is where you're going, what you're going to spend most of your time on in the Support Center Insights tool. Um, and really, there's a, there's a few reports I'm going to highlight here. So I'm going to talk about contact summary. And contact summary is going to give you an overview of how efficiently your call center is handling calls. So this data is going to be related to your average speed of answer, average talk time and handle time, as well as the resolution totals. So how many calls have abandoned, how many have timed out, how many have been handled. And then obviously up here at the top, I set the date range I want to look at. So I'm going to look at yesterday or previous month. I can set a custom range as well. So if, for instance, I have um, an ad campaign that I'm running and I want to see how much traffic that generated. I can set the custom range to be the exact dates of that ad campaign, um, et cetera. And then I select the queues I want to look at. So I might look at everything or I might only look at customer service and tech support because they're really the same department, for instance. Apply filters. I have this information. I can also look at this information uh, over specific dates. So if I'm looking at Friday. I can see, you know, throughout the day what our average speed of answer is. I can see that there have been some spikes and that might you know, trigger me to investigate a bit further. I wanna understand where these spikes are coming from, you know, why we're, we're not handling calls as efficiently as we should. So that might be where I come to agent summary. You know, so agent summary is gonna give me that similar information, but it's based on the agent's performance uh, and not the overall contact center. So I, again, I select the date range, I can select hues and agents that I wanna look at. Um, up here at the top is going to be a total information. So how many handled contacts, how many, you know, what's the average talk time, total talk time over the day, the queues and the agents that I have selected. And then down here, I can see the individual agents. So, you know, I might see that I have a lot of agents who are handling the appropriate amount of calls. You know, it might look like based on the, the you know, contact summary, we, we had a standard amount of calls. We should have been able to address them. We should not have had as many abandoned calls as we did. Down here, I can see which individuals are handling, you know, the amount of calls. So maybe agent eight here is taking as many calls as he should. And then down here, I have, you know, a few other agents who are handling as many calls as they should. And that's kind of standard behavior. But I can see some lower performers in the mix and people who aren't handling nearly as many calls as they should. So maybe they're the issue. Maybe that's why I had those that spike 
um, in you know abandoned calls and my average uh, speed of answer. If I do have a spike in abandoned calls, I can track that here. So I'll come to the abandoned calls report. Again, set a date range. I want to look at specific cues, and I can set a threshold. So for instance, if somebody calls in and then hangs up after three seconds or five seconds on the phone, they're probably not an abandoned call. It's probably somebody that got busy or decided they didn't have the time to call right then, or you know maybe figured it out and figured that they would you know go online and get themselves sorted out. So we want to sort out those you know not real abandoned calls. And so we can set a threshold for time to, to sort for abandoned calls after that amount of time. And then we have the numbers down here, so we can generate this as a contact list. You can provide this to your agents, you know, or maybe sales department as, as a task. They can reach out and try and, you know, maybe capture a, um, you know, business opportunity that we might have missed um, or just ensure good customer service. And then down here is agent effectiveness. So, you know, contact summary lets you know how, how well or how, how well oiled your contact center is, you know, how it's performing. Agent summary lets you know how well your agents are performing. Abandoned calls lets you, you know, generate a contact list and reach back out to anybody who was called in and, you know, any potential business. And then agent effectiveness is really going to help you understand if your agents are being utilized appropriately. So this is some different data. It's not just going to be, you know, how many calls have they addressed, but rather it's going to be the calls that they are addressing. How are they addressing them? And what is that causing? Uh, what, what effect is that having in your contact center? So I set a date range. I can select call types. So I can select, you know, direct inbound, outbound, or queue calls. I can look at all queues and all agents. You know, again, I can select whatever information I want to want to see. So I drill down to what I want to see, and then I can see some outcomes, right? So maybe I have noticed that we have a lot of abandoned calls. Maybe I've generated a contact list and provided it to my agents, and given them a new task of making outbound calls. And now I want to see what effect that's had on our call center. So. I can see total talk time trends. Are they actually trending to spending more and more time on these outbound calls? What percentage of their talk time is being spent on all these calls? So what percentage of their talk time is being spent on queue calls versus outbound calls? I can highlight some of these bar graphs and see a, a direct um, breakdown. So 40, 43% on direct inbound, 56% on queue calls. I can also see percentage of calls answered. So this might be where you say, you know, I can see that our percentage of talk time on queue calls is going up, but our percentage of queue calls being answered is actually decreasing. And queue calls are far more valuable than an outbound call. You know, if they if if they abandon, they might call us back. Uh, whereas if we miss their call if, if too many times, it's it's uh, really costing us some money. So maybe that's a practice that I want to that I want to eliminate now. So this is this is going to be some outcome reporting that's going to help you make those determinations. Down here, we have percentage of queue calls transferred by agent. Um, again, this is demonstration data I'm showing you. There's a server somewhere that's just generating this. So I don't have the, the best data to show you. It's not a real contact center. But this percentage of queue calls transferred by agent simply going to show you how many agents are transferring queue calls. And this is going to be helpful, for instance, in a tiered support environment. So if you have tier one support and tier two support, you can see how many of your tier one support agents are transferring calls. Uh, and that might indicate that they are not as trained or they don't understand how to address these calls entirely themselves. And so that might be where you want to begin training those agents so that they can address more calls and they have to transfer less to tier two. Availability and pause time by agent. This is extraordinarily useful. So really what this is going to do is show you uh, what percentage of the day your agents have been able to, to receive calls. So availability and pause time is determined by how long they're in the queue versus uh, how often they've paused. So I'll I'll explain this a bit further. If if I work a 10 hour shift and I am paused for two hours, you know, one hour of break, one hour of lunch, then I am available 80% of the time. So the way that I would recommend using this is figure out with your shifts and with your breaks and your lunches what the standard availability ratio should be for your agents. And then you can simply glance here and see if they're available for the appropriate amount of time. Right. And this is going to be useful if you have fears or concerns with your agents breaching, uh, you know, state laws regarding employee hours. So you can see if they're too available, you know, hey, you got to take your breaks. You can't be 90% available. You can't be 85% available, whatever that might be, you know, or you're 50% available today. What's going on? Uh, so this is going to make it easy. You can simply glance at somebody and say, oh, you're 41% available. Let me see what's going on. I'm going to scroll down here to my agent availability report. 
And this is going to display when somebody was in the queue and when they mark themselves uh, as paused. So again, I don't have the best examples to show you. This is a server that's generating this. So uh, you know, your, your time map of when your employees are in the queue will look different, but everything that is a sort of a light shade is when they have been paused and everything that's a solid color is when they are ready for calls within the queue. So likely you would see something like down here, they mark themselves ready for calls at you know, 8 a.m. And then they, there's a little shaded highlight section here for a break and then another section for a pause, you know, another section for lunch and then they, they leave and they, they punch out. So this will provide you with the ability to see why they were you know, only available for a certain amount of time. Um, you know, and it's also gonna help you make determinations such as you know, do, do my employees lunches line up with our abandoned calls, for instance, are we staggering lunches? I can see I have too many agents on break at the same time, they think they can pause whenever and that results in you know, us not hitting our KPIs. All right, so that is the Support Center Insights tool. Thank you.